In this video, we are going to be exploring an example of the consolidated undrained test, also known as the CU test. So let's go ahead and write the problem statement down. A CU test is conducted on a granular soil using an all around confining pressure of 35 psi the specimen failed at a deviator stress of 31 psi and at a pore pressure of 22 psi. Compute the undrained and drained friction angles using more circles. Okay, so again, we've got a consolidated undrained test, which means that the specimen was first allowed to consolidate um, with the drainage valves open, thus allowing pore pressure to dissipate during the consolidation phase. Then the drainage valves were closed and the deviator stress was applied until failure. And since the deviator stress was applied and failure occurred with drainage valves closed, that's why we have the U in the name undrained, so consolidated undrained. Um, we also notice that this is a granular soil, so that should tell us what for the start of the solution. Well, maybe pause the video and figure it out yourself, but if it's a granular soil, we can confidently say that both the total and the effective cohesion values are zero since we have a granular soil, okay? Um, it also tells us that we have an all-around confining pressure of 35 PSI and a deviator stress uh, at failure of 31 PSI. So these are total stress values, okay? So we're gonna make a little note here. We're gonna say the total stresses are those values given, and that's the confining pressure, which is sigma three, 35 PSI, and the deviator stress is what we use to get the, my, the uh, major principal stress sigma one. So remember, sigma one is not 31 PSI, it's 35 PSI plus 31 PSI. So our major principal stress uh, at failure for total stress analysis is equal to 66 PSI, okay? And then of course it tells us the pore pressure at failure was 22 PSI. Now, the, um, the problem asks us to determine the both the undrained and the drained friction angles. So what does that mean? That means that we want phi and then we want phi prime, okay? So we're gonna say um, perform a total stress analysis, which is, we sometimes call that TSA, to determine phi, and then we're going to perform an effective stress analysis, which we sometimes abbreviate ESA, to determine 
fee prime. And these two values, fee and fee prime, are not gonna be the same, okay? So remember, effective stress analysis comes from subtracting the pore pressure from our total stress value. So let's go ahead and just figure out what our effective stresses are. So when we eventually want to get to our effective stresses, we're gonna say the um, minor effective principal stress is gonna be, of course, total stress um, in the minor direction minus that poor pressure at failure. So we say 35, of course we say 35 minus 22, and what do we get with 35 minus 22 is just 13 PSI as our minor effective uh, principal stress. And then if we want our um, major effective principal stress at failure, that's gonna be sigma prime one at failure. And of course, that's that total stress, sigma one failure minus the pore pressure at failure. And so again, we're gonna say uh, 66 PSI minus the pore pressure. And we get, of course, um, 44 PSI. So collectively, we have our total stresses and we're gonna use our total stresses to draw a total, total stress more circle and then determine phi. And then from our effective stresses, we're gonna draw an effective stress more circle and determine phi prime. So we're doing kind of the same process, but twice. Once for our uh, total stresses and once for our effective stresses. So let's do it one at a time. Let's say TSA, and then we're gonna determine phi from this. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our uh, set of axes. We're gonna have, of course, a tau axis and put those units on there, PSI. And then we have a sigma axis, PSI. Remember, sigma uh, goes on the horizontal axis, of course. Let's go ahead and scale this off. So if we look at our total stresses here, um, we can use what our magnitudes of our total stresses are to help us scale things off. So if the, if the major total principal stress is 66 PSI, um, I'm just gonna scale this off like this. I'm gonna say, let's make this 70 PSI. And then of course, right smack dab in the middle, we have 35 PSI. And then we can put um, six tick marks that are evenly spaced by five PSI increments in between. So we'll have, let's see, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, oh, let me back that up a little bit and make those a little bit better. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, okay? And then we'll have uh, six evenly spaced here, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay? And of course, when you draw this on your paper, you wanna draw this to scale, okay? And that'll make um, things be drawn a lot nicer than what I'm doing here. So um, I'm gonna draw this in blue. I'm gonna draw the circle in blue. So we have uh, 66 PSI here. This is our uh, sigma one failure, 66 PSI, okay? And then we have um, sigma three is the 35 PSI right here. And then of course we can sketch a nice more circle to scale right through that. And of course, just by looking at this, we can uh, clearly see that sigma average is gonna be 70 PSI plus 35 PSI divided by two. And so we get 50.5 PSI. So where's that gonna be? Let's see, 35, 40, 45, 50. That's about right here, okay sigma average, and then we can get the radius as uh, 70 PSI minus 35 PSI divided by two, and that radius will be 15.5 PSI. And, you know, just think about it logically. How do you want, how do you, how do we get the radius of this circle? Well, we say 70 minus 35, that gives us this diameter, and then we just cut it in half and we get the radius, and that's the 15.5 PSI. Now remember, the problem said it was a granular soil, right? So 
That means that you know that the more Coulomb failure envelope passes through the origin, it has a cohesion value of zero since it's a granular soil. So I'm gonna to try to draw this uh, really nice here. Almost. Pretty good, okay? So this is our uh, MC failure envelope, okay? And we know we have a point of tangency here and that's gonna be at a right angle with respect to the radius of the Mohr circle, okay? So again, same kind of rules as we've seen before um, from a geometric perspective. And remember, this point of tangency indicates that that's where failure is occurring, and we were given failure situations here, failure scenario. Um, we know that this angle down here represents phi, okay? So if we take a look at this big right triangle right here, we can do some trigonometry and we can determine what phi is. And so we can clearly see that the sine of phi is equal to opposite, which is the radius of the Mohr circle, divided by hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is sigma average. Both of these values we, we have here in blue. And then of course, we do some rearranging and we get phi is about equal to 17.9 degrees. So make sure you can punch that through and you get that, that value. So that's our total um, friction angle, okay? Now we're gonna do something very similar for effective stress, but we're just gonna use the effective stress values, okay? So let's here, let's say ESA, and we're gonna be finding phi prime here the effective angle of friction. So here is tau again and PSI. And here is sigma prime in PSI. And so we're gonna scale this off. If we take a look again at our uh, values, our effective stresses that we're using, the minor um, principal stress is 13 PSI, the major is 44 PSI. So let's just use some convenient numbers. Let's maybe uh, use 50 here and then right in the middle is 25 and then um, we can say 25 30 35 40 45 50 and then we'll have 5 10 15 20 25 again draw it to scale so your tick marks are evenly marked off um, it's hard for me to draw this to scale on the, on the ipad just like it would be on a dry erase board so um, we'll go ahead and draw this in blue. Our major principal stress was uh, 44 PSI, so 25, 30, 35, 40. So 44 is about right here, okay? And then the minor was 13, so 5, 10, 15. So 13 is about right here. And then we can throw a uh, more circle through that. Again, draw it to scale. Do your best to draw this to scale. Um, the problem, just a reminder, the problem said it was granular, granular soil. So we know that the MC failure envelope is passing through the origin. And it's going to have a point of tangency here. Again, this is our MC failure envelope. Okay. And um, we can go ahead and calculate some of these uh, important values, kind of like we did before. Sigma average. When you crank this through, you know, sigma average is just going to be 44 PSI plus 13 PSI divided by 2. And I get um, 28.5 PSI. And then similarly, the radius um, ends up being the same as it was before, 15.5 PSI. You can uh, double check that um, to confirm that value. So 28.5 is going to be right around here. Here's sigma average, and then we project a line, a radial line back, and that's a right triangle. And then, of course, uh, we have this um, effective internal angle of friction, phi prime here, okay? So now, um, in, in a similar way that we got phi, we're going to say sine of phi prime is, again, the radius over sigma average. And again, I'm looking at this right triangle right here. And we're gonna do some rearranging and we're gonna get phi prime is equal to about 32.9 degrees. And these are, are our uh, values. So in, in summary, we're gonna have our total friction angle is uh, 
32.9 degrees and our effective friction angle is 32.9 degrees. So let's discuss this very briefly as we conclude this video. Um, it would seem like if you perform an effective stress analysis, your, your um, soil sample will be stronger, right? Because the shear strength of a soil specimen comes from two shear strength parameters, right? It comes from a cohesion value and it comes from a friction angle value. Now that could be either effective uh, values or total stress values, okay? But regardless, you have two, you have a pair of shear strength parameters, cohesion and internal angle of friction, whether you're doing TSA or ESA. So in this case, the cohesion was zero because the problem said it was a granular soil. So that's that's uh, easy to, to deal with. But in terms of the friction angle, the effective friction angle phi prime is 32.9 degrees. It's bigger than the total friction angle. So that that seems to, to you know, maybe be a little confusing. Why is that? Um, does that mean that we, that, you know, sometimes you get more strength and sometimes you get less strength? Well, kind of, yeah, it depends on the presence of pore pressure, right? So if you're performing an effective stress analysis, then you're going to get more strength out of your soil specimen. But if you have a saturated specimen that for whatever reason is not going to be able to drain and you have to perform a total stress analysis because that pore pressure is always going to be there. Let's say you have a, a field scenario where that pore pressure is always going to be there and um, it's never going to drain. Well, then your design or your analysis has to be based on total stress analysis, which in, in this particular example gives you a lower friction angle and thus a lower strength, a lower shear strength. So when you uh, think about this, you have to think about the field scenario and, you know, you have to make a decision. Do you need to base a design off of effective stress parameters, uh, effective shear strength parameters or total shear strength parameters? Or do you need to check both depending on what the specific field condition and project dictates? So that's going to conclude this video example.